if you could be really Sure. So thanks, Kevin. And as everyone heard, we are recording today and just we'll make the slides available on the mm -hmm. recording available afterwards. I uh, hope everybody can see this slide. Um, so we're glad you're here. Again, if you want to introduce yourselves in the chat, uh, say where you're connecting in from, uh, what your institution is, and something else. We talked a little bit about wintry mix earlier. Are you getting wintry mix? Are you getting <laughs> you know warm and sunny as the, like Sarah is in Arizona? So share a little bit, get help help us all get to know you. In terms of up to coming ABRF events, um, next month, we're going to be offering a two-part workshop on uh, S10 grant applications. So that's going to be on consecutive days. These sessions will also be recorded. So if it doesn't fit in your schedule, don't worry. Uh, it'll be available to all ABRF members afterwards. Um, you can see the topics that will be covered in each part. Each day will be 90 minutes from noon to 1.30 Eastern time. Um, this is led by uh, three ABRF leaders, Joe Dragovan at Boulder, Gina Mache at NYU, and uh, Sue Weintraub at the University of Texas. So please join us for that program next month. And Kevin mentioned, of course, the annual meetings coming up in May, a little bit later time frame for this year uh, in Boston. So we're hoping to have terrific, uh, no wintry mix, uh, terrific uh, spring weather in Boston in early May. Um, the earliest registration uh, fees are still available through to the end of the month. Um, and for individual members, you also have the opportunity to bundle your membership with the meeting registration, save a little money on the combination of those two. We're finalizing the program. You'll go to the website now and you'll see some of the marquee elements, our keynote speakers, our award recipients. And then our program team is finalizing the rest of the program, the concurrent sessions, the research group uh, study presentations, and so forth. That'll all be finished by the by the end of the, about two weeks. Um, and so keep going back to the website to learn more about how the program is coming together. But don't miss your spot. Um, say register uh, for the meeting as soon as you can. Once again, membership renewal, as I mentioned, you have the opportunity to save a little bit by bundling membership renewal and meeting registration if that fits into your schedule. Um, we're in a grace period right now. So for those of you who are with institutions or individual members, if you didn't get the chance to process that renewal online in, at the end of the year, you've still got a couple more, uh, about 10 days left to make that happen. Uh, otherwise, you know, you, you'll miss losing out on access to the website, the discounts and other benefits uh, of ABR membership including participating in events like this. So take a few minutes, you can scan the QR code or just go to the website um, to update and renew your membership. Uh, we're doing a one question survey. Once again, you've got a QR code and a link on the screen. What other societies are you a part of? Um, the reason we're doing this is we have a task force that's looking at collaboration opportunities with other professional and scientific societies and learning more about the other groups that our members are a part of points us in the right direction to know who are the likely groups that might work with us if we understand that 10, 5, 15% of our members are members of both organizations. And this can help us have conversations about potential future program collaborations, projects, ways that we can make the most of your interests in, in both organizations. So once again, if you have a minute, to follow those QR code, that QR code or the link um, to give us that feedback. All right, now on to the topic for today, which is research groups and committees, which are terrific ways to become involved in ABRF. Like a lot of volunteer efforts, you know, the, the truism is the more you contribute, the more you get back. Uh, and ABRF opportunities are really a way for you to either apply skills and interests that you have already or perhaps build new skills and try out new roles that you may not have an opportunity to exercise in your day-to-day -day job. So I want to turn it over to Roxanne Ashworth, a member of our executive board uh, and very active in our all of our research groups, oversees many of their activities uh, to, to lead us in this overview and presentation. Roxanne? Thanks, Ken. Uh, can you advance the slide? Um, so if you don't know what a research group is, um, research groups are really, to, uh, pun, to make a pun, a, the core of ABRF. Um, 
They're organized by ABRF members to advance specific biotechnologies and analytical techniques for the benefit of core and research laboratories. And they're really a group of like-minded individuals that come together and come up with um, ways to test our current techniques, um, improve method methodology, uh, sometimes just to talk about the things that are driving you crazy about your various instruments um, and really a way to say, okay, so this is driving us crazy. How do we make it better? Um, or how, how can we test where we are as a group? Uh, next slide, Ken. Um, so research groups can have various levels of participation. Um, we always have the great chair who is um, organizing and herding all of the cats. And then um, usually there's a co-chair who will be stepping in as the primary chair later. And then all the members who come up with the great ideas, collect the samples, conduct the tests and analysis, um, contribute ideas, maybe talk to vendors to get uh, vendor support for the research studies. And then the research group, the goal is always to prepare a manuscript, uh, get it published either in JBT or another journal and present the results at the ABRF meeting and hopefully also your technology specific um, meeting so that uh, it really helps with the strategic plan, a goal of making ABRF the uh, technology leader, the group, the organization that people think of when they um, think of who do I go to talk to about um, how a particular technology works and um, who really knows what the standards are for the instrumentation. The RGs are the groups that make ABRF the expert in that uh, in that area. Next slide, Ken. So here's a list of our current ABRF research groups. Um, we have quite a few in the genomics field. Um, and then we have metabolomics, proteomics, mass spectrometry. I can talk today. Um, and flow cytometry, light microscopy. Um, so really, if you are interested in any of these areas, there's um, a home for you. Um, especially if you're you're wanting to work with others and and, um, and study different aspects of your particular field. Uh, next slide. Here is a list to give you an idea of what some of our current research groups are doing. Um, so every year, research groups are given the opportunity to propose a study. Um, ABRF funds that study along with um, our, our sponsors, our, um, our industry partners, and, and then they work on that for a year or for two years, and it produces a result that is then published. So this year, the Genome Editing Research Group is working on some of the new materials that are on the market for CRISPR-mediated knock-ins. Um, the DSRG is taking a deep look at um, how cell preservation affects um, single cell RNA sequencing. And the bioinform bioinformatics research group is taking the data from the single from the DNA sequencing research group and doing um, an analysis of that and looking at various different analysis methods that are out there. And the flow cytometry research group is testing the accuracy of drop delay on sorters and on various sorters that have automated drop delay calibration, um, which is a hot topic in flow cytometry right now. Um, 
so you, it just gives you an idea of some of what's going on currently and the different potential for um, topics that can be studied by the research groups. Next slide. And we, as always, like to thank our corporate par partners. They have contributed, these um, partners in particular, have contributed a great deal of resources to the DSRG study. Um, and without them, we really can't do these studies. So um, two of our research groups have offered to give us a little background, a little more background and a look into what they're doing. Um, so first up is Kathy Schaefer uh, from the Flow Cytometry Research Group. Um, we did not coordinate well enough to know if Kathy has slides or if she's just going to talk. I, I do not have slides, but I have several members of the committee here that I do want to introduce and kind of let them present their portion of our research group and what we're doing. So I'm current acting chair of um, the flow cytometry research group. And Sarah Bowen's here, who had been the chair before me that I inherited it from. And um, we also have um, Jane Travasta, who is the co-chair currently, and she is running our flow cytometry community college curriculum development pro project. And I'll talk a little bit more, but hand it over to Jane to talk about that. And we have Christiane Hassel, who is running this drop delay project that, um, that Roxanne mentioned. And we also have Celine Lange, who is a member of FCRG. So we've got some good representation here from the committee. But basically, we are meeting as a committee to discuss what are the important things inside of the, the flow world right now and where we can make an impact in terms of doing research, establishing an SOP that then can be used in the greater community. And um, we're also right now heading up a pilot portion of a grant that ABRF has in coordination with um, Innovate Bio to try to come up with community college curricula that is core specific to our technologies so that these programs can be presented at the community college level to eventually get people who are going to be skilled to not only work in our cores, but be trained in core, not only your specific technology, but more about what you need to do as a core member in terms of well, you guys all know what that's about, and I'm going to let Jane um, talk about that. But first, I will hand this over to Christian for the drop delay, if she's ready. Let me see. <clears throat> Excuse me, I'm going to drink a water. I didn't know I was going to be talking today. <laughs> but that's okay, because drop delay is near and dear to my heart. <laughs> So one of the things that we are in the process of doing is looking at flow cytometry drop delay. And what that entails for those of you who are not familiar with flow cytometry and sorting is that when we set up a sorter um, and we want to make sure that the droplets are, are formed correctly first, so we do our, our quality control, and flow cytometry sorting is mostly electrostatic and the cells are cut, are in the droplets. And then we need to make sure that when we analyze those cells or other particles, and when they come out, that that timing is correct so that we can sort the correct cell or particle that we're looking for. And if that doesn't happen and that timing is off, then we could sort empty droplets and or we can sort incorrect um, cells or particles that we're looking for. So drop delay is super important in setting up the instrument because that allows us to have the correct timing. 
<clears throat> and so for our project, so what we're looking at is flow cytometry was invented for blood cells, but we use it for so, <clears throat> so much more. And so, excuse me. And so when we look at small, smaller particles from about five to 10 micron, that in that case, we can usually do an automated sort setup. We use what the instrument tells us and we sort it and it's fine. But larger particles can sometimes cause drag or slow down in the stream and could be sorted incorrectly. So we don't get as many of those particles. Some of the drops might be empty if the drop delay is off. And so what we're doing is we're looking at automated sort setups. And we want to say we want to see what 10 micron particles versus 25 micron particles, if those sort the same or not. So that's what we're doing right now. And so that information is something that we will present at the upcoming meeting. And so we'll see what we'll see what happens. We're, like I said, currently in that in that process. And all of our um, FCRG members um, are involved in that. And we'll have some data at the meeting in May. Anything else I can say about that? That's perfect. <laughs> okay, great. Thank you. And Jane, do you want to say like two sentences about what you're doing? Sure. <laughs> um, so uh, many of you will have heard of the grant that ABRF are collaborating on with uh, Innovate Bio. And this is really to get um, community college students into programs that are specifically tailored for our techniques, such as flow cytometry or microscopy or genomics and things like that. So that grant has been submitted uh, late last year, and we should hear about it in May. In the meantime, the FCRG are, um, are starting to write the pilot program and starting with uh, the introduction to flow cytometry and really tailoring it towards um, towards uh, people that actually work in cords rather than an academic focused program. Uh, we are fortunately collaborating with the ISAC, which is the International Society for the Advancement of Cytometry, who have agreed that this is really important. And we are presenting a workshop, if anybody's going to that, at the uh, 2023 conference in um in Montreal to really talk about the issues that are facing cause and trying to employ cause today. Uh, so yeah, so if you need any more information on that, please contact me or Kathy. Um, happy to provide that for you and happy for any ideas and collaboration. Thank you. Thanks. So uh, FCRG's really got their hands in two pots of uh, of what ABRF is moving forward with, um, and then. We also wanted to ask Guillermo uh, to speak about the um, light microscopy research group. Thank you, Roxanne. First of all, I would like to say that had I known I didn't have to prepare the slides, this would have been much easier. And second, I could bring reinforcements. I mean, I don't think any of my crew is here. I feel so outgunned that this is not even funny. Anyway, we'll, we'll try. We'll try our best. Well, thank you everyone for showing up. Good seeing you. And I'm going to give you a, a summary of what we do and what we are trying to do, what we have in the past, what we are doing now, and a little bit of maybe what the future will hold. If I can find my presentation, here it is. Then we go to the beginning. And da, 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 da. Mm -hmm. Okay, is this working? Yeah, you're in presenter view. Hmm. Okay. How do we undo that? Uh, Apparently Zoom changed the controls yesterday. Yes, yeah, so just hit the easel at the bottom in the toolbar there, next to the percentage scale on the lower right. Yeah, you're over it. Yeah. I'm, I'm where I was. Okay, doesn't matter. I don't have any surprises here. I mean, it matters because we can <laughs> order, right? Uh, let's do this differently then. 
can write like this. Will this work for everyone? Sure. Yes. Go ahead. All right, cool. So um, my name is Yero Marquez. I'm at the University of Minnesota Imaging Centers. And since May, I am the chair of the Lab Microscopy Research Group. And the previous chair it was Chris uh, Kubo from uh, uh, Madison University. And uh, I'm going to just walk you through, as you can tell, 11 slides. And the mission of this group is, is to increase, basically, this is a, a way to up our game, right? We, we uh, want to get better at what we do. And we want to get better at what we do within the context of an imaging core. And that's, as you will see in the following slides, have multiple uh, uh, facets, some of them uh, more into the quality control, quality assurance, some of them more in the, in the educational aspect, some of them participation in the meetings, similar to, to what our uh, colleagues in, in the flow group do. These are current roster, uh, still in the process of ascertaining uh, uh, you know the, the different tasks for everyone etc and we have I want to make a special mention for Natalia from the University of Virginia and Jan Wei from the University of Colorado who recently joined us and uh, Erica uh, sorry uh, uh, Erica will come in the next slide so um, your name here right so what's needs for you well you get to educate yourself and you get to develop your professional network that will be the two uh, uh, benefits for you. Obviously, there are the benefits for the community at large, and that is what uh, what similar to what we have heard before from Katie. Our activities, uh, including studies uh, along the lines of what uh, has been discussed before, and the goal here is to gather information and provide guidance on what are the specific uh, best practices, if you will, for some of the procedures we have to perform on a regular basis. And as you will see in the studies that I will describe in a few minutes, in a few more slides, they have been largely based on uh, quality control, quality analysis, quality assurance. And then we also participate in sessions at the annual uh, ABRF meetings. And typically there tend to be sessions on emerging topics or topics that have been neglected for a long, long time because, you know, they always get the back burner because they are not urgent. Then we serve as a clearing house in which we kind of, uh, that, that task that, uh, or, or that facet that Roxanne was talking about, like, you know, exchanging information. Sometimes it's just a whining session and, and griping about clients. Sometimes it's a bit more, more uh, focused and useful in terms of how do you do this? How is, each of the 15, 20 members doing things, what can we do better by learning from each other? And then we have this educational aspect that we are beginning right now to focus on into what materials can we provide, not just to the LMRG groups members, of course, but to the imaging community at large that will be useful in terms of you know, developing or discharging our duties as uh, staff at a, a shared resource facility that is devoted to image. The uh, first research study was published 10 years ago, and this is on the uh, quality uh, control for objectives, spectral separation. I'm not going to take anything about it. I just wanted to give you a flavor. And this was led by Rich Cole and Claire Brown. The second study, or maybe I have this swap, this is 2011, oops, it was uh, uh, led by Richard Cole, and that was in, in the quality con assurance of uh, laser scanning confocal microscopes. As uh, I don't know if you've been following the literature on this, but there is a, a, a very substantial push in the imaging community, not only in ABRF, but also in, in bioimaging North America and uh, another. Uh, imaging the uh, German bioimaging, international bioimaging, in making sure that there is some rigor and reproducibility in imaging, and that is starts by making sure that instrumentation is properly uh, calibrated and uh, okay. 
and that requires a series of tools and a series of of uh, uh, yardsticks and figures of merit. That that's what this uh, one of these studies, uh, earlier studies, addressed. Study three, that is uh, Erica We I told you that she will come uh, back here in a moment. I, I talked with her yesterday. She's one of the lead authors in this paper. This uh, article is pending final decision by the editor after being resubmitted microscopy and microanalysis. I expect it to be out before the Boston meeting. And uh, this uh, study was uh, devoted to developing a standard for live tissue imaging. There are many, many standards out there for imaging fixed materials or for imaging inorganic materials, beads, slides that, that you can purchase or prepare yourself, but they are meant to calibrate and characterize your system based on a sample that has been fixed and a sample that has been embedded in a rather unphysiological conditions. And a large part of what the lab microscopy research group does for uh, imaging cores in general across ABRF is biological imaging. And that tends to be done at least to some extent or a large extent in live samples. So this study was meant to develop and characterize some kind of a standard sample that could be used to uh, calibrate and test the performance of instrumentation. And this was uh, led by Claire Brown. And uh, it's uh, all, as I said, it's, it's, I'm hoping that any day now we can put this in press. And full disclaimer, I have nothing to do with any of these studies so far. And uh, study four is the one that we have ongoing now. And this again, a way to, how do you develop uh, uh, how did you assess if the tools and procedures you are using are accurate in their in their performance and they are really uh, measuring what you think they are measuring? And this study is centering not in image acquisition but in image analysis. And the question really is: if we give you as an image. And I ask, we ask you to quantify that image, which is what the heart of what we do. Do different groups with different platforms and different pipelines to the analysis reach the same result or reach different results? The example that shows in the image is a synthetic image that was critical because we need to know exactly what was in there. So this is not an image acquired in a microscope, this is an image generated in a computer. And in this case is uh, the image of five nuclei. And the question we ask you is how many nuclei are there? Where are their coordinates? What are the intensity levels of, of the signal in those nuclei? And then we ask you what is the uh, pipeline you followed and why? The analysis in progress, we uh, will be presenting some preliminary results in Boston 2023. Just, uh, I will just give you the shocking result that if you get images that have differing levels of clustering, meaning the objects are either very separate or very close, and then you get within those different levels of clustering better or worse signal to noise ratio, people tend to perform better with better signal to noise ratio and when the objects are not clustered. Not exactly shocking, but we have some other conclusions that I think will be more interesting. And, and we will be presenting a, a, a teaser at least in, in Boston. So that's a study for, we took, uh, Roxanne, Roxanne mentioned that, you know, uh, the light, uh, the different research groups can request uh, uh, funding or support for uh, studies. And there's a, a yearly, uh, call for that. This year we took a, a decided to skip this year because with the COVID pandemic and, and all sorts of disruptions, we haven't been really, uh, we, we are really running quite behind with this study and we decided not to get, you know, not to double down in our, in our busyness. So try to clear our deck before we move to the next study. Now we also um, have meeting contributions that are distinct from those studies. I mentioned that we are going to be presenting a teaser or a little bit of this study in, in Boston, but the 
core of what we do for the annual meeting tend to be sessions that are centered on topics that are we think that they are uh, that everyone should be hearing about it and not just the light microscopy research group and so we also do uh, sessions in the meeting and we have done in the past satellite workshops again we are not doing a satellite workshop this year the last one we did was in 2021 on fluorescent dyes on 2022 in Palm Springs, we had a session on this the um, challenge of data storage that for image facilities is uh, uh, substantial given the, the large size of the data sets. And for Boston 2023, and this is a very recent decision, we are gonna be having a session that is on the manipulation of image data, both the uh, opportunities that that presents in terms of obtaining quantitative data and uh, the serious challenges for rigor and reproducibility that come from both the inadequate use of that uh, uh, of those data sets and more concernedly the uh, dishonest use of of this uh, uh, of this information as you know already a large a number of the cases of, of scientific fraud that are uncovered are based on uh, fraudulent manipulation of, of digital images. So we will have in a session on that in Boston. For Minneapolis 2024, still to be done, but uh, mark your calendars. By April, we'll probably have less than three feet of snow on the ground. So you probably will enjoy this very much. And so just uh, make sure that you put that in your calendar and uh, the topic will be determined. But input is always work. Oh, okay. I opened the wrong presentation, but everything is in here. Um, it just doesn't look pretty. The educational aspect that we are beginning to, or beginning, they are beginning to, we've been doing this forever, but we are going to emphasize it more is instead of generating standards and generating quality assurance uh, protocols, we are trying to generate educational materials. Educational materials focus not as uh, our flow colleagues were mentioning before, uh, for those community college program that, good luck with the grant, by the way, and uh, that, that is gonna be, I think it's a fantastic initiative these are more educational materials geared towards ourselves and our client base. We keep reinventing the wheel of how to train people in this instrument or that instrument. One of the things in that uh, imaging course are not unique, but certainly are at the far end of the distribution is that we do a lot of training and very little instrument use ourselves. But so the course in which Mostly is the customer drops the sample, the sample is analyzed by the core. In our uh, imaging course, most of the use of the instrumentation is done by, by clients. So it is a key component that the clients have to be trained. And as I said, we keep reinventing the wheel on how to do this. So we are trying to, to develop some pipelines and workflows in which this can be done. I hope that this is gonna be uh, we certainly need it, and particularly this is important for cores that are a small cores. We have a, a fairly large number of one-person core in which you know it will be a, a really good value to have not necessarily off the shelf, but because it has to be customizable, but pretty much 90% there, something that you can say, okay, I'm gonna try in this particular instrumentation approach. Here's a, a, a a starting point for me to adjust to my own instrumentation. So these are uh, the highlights of what we do. If you want to contact me for more gory details, uh, that's my information in there. Uh, we also have the, a web page within the, the ABRF uh, website. And uh, the more the merrier. There's plenty of things to do for everyone. Thank you for your attention. helps to unmute. Thank you. Thank you very much for that.
Um, so hopefully that gives you a flavor of what our research groups are up to. Um, the other great volunteer opportunity that there is within ABRF are our committees. Um, and the committees help develop and manage resources and programs that benefit ABRF. Um, and they provide leadership opportunities. And increasingly, our committees are also developing uh, educational resources as well. Um, here's a list of our committees. Um, everything from the annual meeting, if you really like to plan meetings. The 2024 Annual Meeting Committee is forming up right now. Um, you can talk to me if you're interested in that. And I will get you in touch with uh, Joe Dragovan, who I don't think is on, um, but he is the chair. Um, if you really like finances, we have an audit committee, uh, career development, and every um, every region of the U.S. has uh, a chapter, and those chapters have organizing committees um, that are always looking for new participation, uh, new participants. It's a great way to meet the local core facilities um, in your area and work with them to develop programs. Um, communications. If you have thoughts and opinions on our website and our other communications tools, talk to Matt DeVries. He wants you <laughs> to join his committee. Um, the Core Administrators Network is um, for core administrators, ironically. Uh, and that, um, that committee does a lot of work with like, what are the best ways to do rate setting? And um, how do we how do we be better core administrators? Uh, corporate relations is the committee that helps fund everything we do at ABRF. Um, if you like talking to vendors, Bob Steen would like to talk to you. Um, education, that's the committee that develops all those pre-conference pre workshops um, and the other workshops that happen online during the year. So if you have uh, thoughts and ideas for that, um, that committee is open. Um, finance and development is uh, looking at our whole entire financial um, uh, picture at ABRF um, and dealing with investments and things like that. Membership committee, um, that's the committee that welcomes new members to ABRF and provides um, provides the resources that tell you, hey, these are the things you can do as an ABRF member and also helps um, with recruitment of new members. Uh, the nominations committee, that's a pretty small committee. It uh, looks at, determines who uh, gets nominated to be on the executive board and the outstanding scientist scholarship committee. Um, that is the committee that helps determine who receives our outstanding scientist scholarships. Um, <laughs> fortunately, many of them are, are, are self-explanatory. I don't think we actually got um, people here to talk about the committees. No, I think we, we drafted someone. Um, Do we? Yes, and yep. I also wanted to check if we had okay. someone else who would be, no. So. Uh, for the Education Committee, they prepared this quick overview of some of the activities that they're involved in. And it's really around working with ABRF members to develop content and programming that meet your needs. Uh, Roxanne mentioned that they will be set, they organize sessions at the upcoming annual meeting, to, in, in particular, the sessions that are uh, offered at, prior to the meeting, the pre-meeting workshops. There will likely be three, four, or five of those uh, prior to the Boston meeting. The Education Committee also coordinates the poster presentations at the upcoming meeting. Uh, we will offer electronic posters this year, as well as a select number of in-person posters that will either be research posters, the traditional types of posters, or information posters. If you'd like to describe the capabilities and services available in your core facility or at your institution, there'll be a way to share that information in a poster format 
uh, including in an electronic environment uh, during, during the meeting. So once again, the, the education committee, the email address is here on the screen. They're always welcome uh, for new ideas, suggestions. They are making progress in identifying the topics that was mentioned earlier around flow cytometry, as well as imaging around the curriculum, the set of content that would be valuable for ABRF members to access. Uh, that's another project that the education committee is taking on. However, for the other committee we wanted to focus on today, the, oops, I skipped it, the membership committee, we actually have the chair of the membership committee, Sarah Bowen, who is with us and has agreed to just give a quick update or highlight of, of the role of the education committee. Sarah? The membership committee. Membership um, committee, sorry. Yeah, that's fine. Um, we spend a lot of time developing ways to include new membership. So we work a lot with um, organizations that will add the institutional membership. And then uh, every year when it's time for them to renew, we, we talk to the institutional members about what they received throughout the year and what they, what they like and what they don't like. Um, but we also spend a lot of time talking about the current membership. So we try and develop ways that the current membership can really participate in ABRF because it it's it's nice to have a thousand members or two thousand members, but it's not really helpful if we're not growing with one another. So we spend a lot of time trying to really engage the the current members. Unfortunately, our member our membership committee is going to shrink a lot this year because I am joining the executive board and Soma is joining the executive board and Ron Neese is stepping back. So if you like engaging people and you really enjoy thinking of ways to get people to really participate in ABRF, I think this is a, a great opportunity. I have made so much connections being on the membership committee that I never would have, have accomplished in, on my own. So if you're interested, uh, please reach out to me or, or Ken or anyone and they'll get you to me or Ken and uh, we'll dip your toes into memcom. All right, so if you are interested in participating, um, please check the webpage for any of the RGs or the committees and reach out to the chair if you have questions. Um, there is also, in many places on the website, a forum linked um, that you can join, uh, put in your application. I also just put that link in the chat. Um, so the, the only requirements are that you be a member of ABRF and that you send a statement of interest to the committee or RG chair, um, along with a CV, if you have a CV and just let them know why you're interested and how you think you can participate. And, um, and that will start a conversation. And we're happy to have you be um, a member. Uh, the next slide is questions. But before we get to questions, I also would like to point out that um, if, if you feel that maybe you're not quite ready to um, put in the time commitment to being on a committee or a um, RG, we do have our new connected community, um, which if you haven't logged into yet, you really should get yourself set up there. Your login is the same as your ABRF login. And Every single RG and committee also has a topical community that is just for discussion of any topic that you might have that you're interested in that's related to that. You can join any of those topic areas and pose questions there. You can also pose questions just in the all members section of the connected community. Um, but really we have those little breakout areas that are there for people to talk to each other um, at a time that's convenient. Um, and you can control if you get notified instantly when somebody talks in that channel or if you want a daily digest or 
um, or maybe no information at all and you only look when you log in. Um, I would suggest the Daily Digest at least. Um, so does anyone have any questions or thoughts or comments? Um, oh, and the other thing I forgot to mention is just because we have all these set RGs and committees, if there's an RG you think we should have, like, why aren't we looking at, I don't know what, um, why isn't there a group? Or I really want to look at this, maybe animals, an animal topic. That's an area that um, ABRF is kind of new to, um, but we realize that a lot of our core facilities deal with animals. Um, so not on the veterinary and husbandry side, but like animal imaging or um, genome editing. If you have thoughts on those, reach out to the uh, to the um, executive board and let us know. Hey, I'd like to see us do this. And I think I have three or four other people who might be interested in that. Or post something in the communities and say, is anyone else interested in this topic? Could we get a group together and maybe meet in May? Um, so questions, thoughts? We have 12 minutes left. Roxanne, before we go, we were we wanted to ask uh, our president-elect Marie Adams to talk about next month's town hall uh, that I believe she'll be organizing, and we're going to make a slight schedule change for next month. Marie, are you still with us? Oh, there you are. Hi. I am, and I apologize for any background noise because they're doing construction right outside my office. Because of course they are. Uh, yes, but next month, um, the topic that we're going to discuss is uh, the idea of instilling a culture of mindfulness when using core self-serve instrumentation. Um, ideas like the good neighborhood principle. How do you teach people to leave things better than you found them? Um, you know, how do you make them feel comfortable asking questions, letting you know when something is broken, letting you know that they might have accidentally did the one that broke it? Um, and letting customers know that our instrumentation is well QC'd and communicating that our systems are up to date and that they're going to create reliable research results for that. Um, so as Ken mentioned, we're going to change the date slightly because we have it running up against our S10 uh, session, which I would also recommend people attend. Uh, but this town hall will then be February 22nd at noon Eastern. Uh, also, since we're talking about volunteering, um, I am still looking for somebody who's interested in potentially moderating that session. Um, and we would love to have any questions that you would like us to address during that. So I will put my email in the chat. And if either one of those appeal to you, uh, please just reach out. Great. So now, Anything anyone wants to talk about? Hey, Roxanne, I just want to say thank you so much. And I want to let everyone know. So I'm in two committees, the Education Committee and the Diversity, Equity, Inclusion Committee. It is fun to be there, trust me, and I really enjoyed it. So if anyone wants to join this and other committees, I definitely encourage you to, to get in and then to know a group of passionate people in core facilities or over here to have some uh, great conversations every couple of weeks, a few weeks. So it's a great opportunity to get to know people and, uh, and also it's fun as well. Thank you. I have a question. Oh, Kathy raised her hand. Oh. <laughs> At the same time. Yeah. Sorry. Um, <laughs> I also just wanted to say I had put my um, email in the chat for anyone who wanted to learn more about the ABRF Innovate Bio Community College Curriculum Initiative. But we've also put in to have a workshop, a pre meeting workshop for the ABRF meeting. So hopefully we'll get that approved. And it's just basically how can we create the community college curricula not only for your specific technology, but incorporating the core principles, even like Marie was kind of talking about the instrumentation and the community building around your users. Okay, Sarah. <laughs> so 
have we established when posters are due for ABRF this year? February 15th. Thank you. I bet that was in the presentation. I just didn't write it down. It was not in this presentation, but I know it because it's going to be a topic in the RG chairs meeting tomorrow. So. <laughs> Is everybody excited to go join a committee or RG? Roxanne, with a few minutes remaining, Kevin has asked that we that we do a quick demonstration of the community uh, just to show folks how it works and how to get involved. And so we'll keep our fingers crossed and try to do that. Okay. All right. So as, as Roxanne mentioned earlier, she put the link to this page uh, in the chat. So you can see that here. Oops, I'm gonna have background noise. Um, but this is the home page, and you can navigate to any of the available communities here, including the all members community, which gives you the opportunity to instantaneously contact your 2200 colleagues in ABRF. And then there's also the communities that you're already a part of, as well as suggested communities based upon the profile that you may have. Uh, completed here in the community, it will indicate other communities that you might be interested in. As the administrator, there's a long list here for me, um, but you can see the other point I wanted to make here is there are additional community conversations available for topics that have not yet risen to the level of a research group, but that might be of interest to a subset of ABRF members, biobanks, for example, or bioinformatics, uh, and so forth. So if there are, as was mentioned earlier, if you have an additional topic that you'd like to have a community around or a conversation around, and it may not fit into the existing list, just reach out to us. We'd be happy to set that up uh, so that you can start a dialogue with others in ABRF that might have similar interests. Any questions about, I hope everyone has logged in. As, as Roxanne mentioned, your login credentials are identical to your ABRF credentials, and the system knows that. So I'm gonna go back to the, just very quickly, go back, here we are at the ABRF homepage, and when you click on the community, it will go there, and then log, you'll wanna log in or sign in, and then your credentials are already stored between the two systems. So you just need to put in your information and it will recognize, if I had been logged in already, it would already recognize that. So it will remember who you are and then you log you back into the community. You only have to do this the first time you access things. And then you will go back to the community. I have too many windows open, so it's moving a little more slowly for me. And then it goes back to the community. So you don't have to do what I just did. You don't have to enter your credentials each time. So, and then we're back here at the home section. And then you can see posts that are mentioned that are suggested for you, some of the new posts. Take a few minutes, complete your profile. This is a sort of an alternate version of the membership directory where you're allowed to go into you know, a little more detail around your associations, your background, your job history, if you'd like. Uh, again, it's completely voluntary to share whatever you'd like to, to post in your profile. But the more you post, the more, the more, the easier it is for, for colleagues to find you with, with shared interests. So just wanted to provide a quick navigation of the community. Happy to answer any questions about that. Please try it out. And I see that uh, Andrew, uh, who's the chair of the program committee for this year's meeting, has also posted the link to submit your poster abstract um, by the February 15th deadline that Roxanne mentioned. So still an opportunity to do that. Thanks, Roxanne. Thanks for letting us show that. No, that's great. Well, if there aren't any other questions, I guess we can give people three minutes back in their day. So Terrific. Thank well, you. thank you, Roxanne. Thanks, everyone, for joining. Uh, we'll Thanks. send, if you want a recording link, we'll be sending that out as well and putting it on the website for those who missed uh, the terrific conversation today. Thank you all. Bye, everyone.
Thank you. Bye. Bye.